Hello and welcome to the first video of this two-part series in our Latin American Revolutions unit. Uh, this one, video A, is for your pro-revolutionary needs in your debates. Now, the big picture here on the pro-revolutionary side is that the revolutions in the Americas resulted in big social and political changes. Loads of countries gained independence. Many abolished slavery. The lower classes got more political power, and the Europeans were kicked out forever, kind of, sort of, not everywhere and not all the time, but lots were. Um, there are a bunch of new countries that came around. And these are the uh, important ones that you need to know for your test, but also can be some key pieces of evidence you use in your uh, debate argument. Because Haiti in 1804, Colombia in 1810, Mexico in 1810, Venezuela in 1811, and Brazil in 1822 all achieved independence, political independence from the countries that used to control them. So no longer these child countries stuck to a parent country, sending them all of their trade goods. There were also social changes, like after the revolution, um, there were these new governments got rid of all those strict race-based divisions, kind of, sort of, and not everywhere, but uh, there were a lot that were reduced, and if they were still in place, a lot of it, it wasn't by law, but it was by, um, just sort of by custom, people continuing to do it in their society. Um, this time of social upheaval also gave the opportunity for um, Manuel Piar and Jose Padilla to advance in society because they were uh, people of mixed race and in that case mulatto which means uh, European and African ancestry mixed together um, and they would not have been able to advance very far in the colonial society whatsoever so this was an excellent opportunity for them and other people like them um, to gain some power and also some influence and uh, build up some economic base which helps you in a lot of other ways as well so big things happening then most countries to gain their independence had abolished slavery by 1850. And this had a lot to do with um, just the ideas of independence and of equality and liberty and those sorts of things moving their way in from the American and French revolutions, but also just because if you're not in a parent and mother, you know, mother and child uh, country relationship, then the old system of plantation slavery doesn't work the same way and isn't as effective. And you can't keep the slaves down as well because you're a much smaller population of non-slaves trying to keep control, as um, Haiti found out, and that was a successful slave rebellion. So abolishing slavery became a big part of these independent countries. And the non-independent areas often kept slavery around longer because it was valuable for the mother country. So Europeans were kicked out. Latin Americans are able to choose their own political leaders and shape their own political and economic destiny, which is a big deal. Like in America, we really believe that you should be able to make choices about who leads you and what those people do when they're in office. We even get annoyed when we elect someone. They don't exactly do what we want them to do. So um, for Latin Americans to have that, I think you, know, you need to look at it as a positive thing. The more localized government, people are able to uh, have their voice heard more and their needs met more consistently. So the Monroe Doctrine, uh, which the United States, you know, remember we saw that in the first uh, PowerPoint of this unit, that the Monroe Doctrine helped protect Latin American countries from re-invasion. So there was some stability added to these new countries by the United States deciding that we were going to take it as a personal offense if any Europeans showed back up and tried to colonize again. And that sounds pretty good. That means that they weren't having to constantly fight wars after these revolutions with their mother countries anymore, which is pretty ideal. And... As a result, there's this different kind of new world. Before, there were these large populations under the control of n nations a whole ocean away, and those little colonies were just making stuff for the mother country all the time, only uh, sending their natural resources, cash crops, and especially the metals that they mine from the ground, like uh, silver and gold. And that isn't a great way to build up your economy and result in widespread equality in your economy. Um, and you certainly aren't politically independent, and not a lot that gets done gets done in your interest if you're just an average Joe living in those countries. But afterwards, they were independent countries, able to make their own rules and work for themselves. And that, how very American of them. But, it, you know, just in terms of, like, what their ideal was, that was also appealing to the people living there. So it certainly was successful in the sense that the things that they wanted, independence and the ability to choose their own way, were met. So for those of you on the pro side... These have been the points that might help you make your argument.